Hi, my name is Marco from Avio. We are a Clever Touch partner here in Ireland. Today I'm going to take you through a quick guide on our uh, Clever Touch M series. So what I currently have in front of me is the 75 inch M series. These come in 65, 75 and 86 inch sizes, which are measured along the diagonal of the screen. At the bottom of the screen, we also get two magnetic pads where our stylus bends. Next to that, we have our uh, two speakers as well. They're really loud for the class. On the bottom right side, we also have our power button. We have our USB-C, HDMI, our touch and two USB inputs. We can also find additional inputs uh, on the right back side of the screen. What I have on the screen, it's called Clever Live. It's our digital signage platform made by Clever Touch. With Clever Lime, I'm able to add in my own photos, videos, different colors, different logos, for example, into certain presentations. Now I'm able to share these presentations across all the screens uh, in my facility if I wish to do so. I'm also able to make different presentations and share them only to certain screens in the facility. Clever Live comes at no extra cost. It's a free to download app and there's no certain subscriptions with Clever Live as well. With Clever Live, I'm also able to send different alerts across all the screens in my facility. So for example, let's say training outside and we're not going out uh, for playtime today, we can send another, uh, an alert across all the screens in the school saying no playtime today due to uh, weather conditions. To tap out of that, I'm just gonna tap on the screen and that's gonna bring me back to my home screen. In my home screen, I get two arrows on the sides and one arrow at the bottom of the screen as well. If I tap on the arrow at the bottom, this is going to bring up my input settings. So here I have my Lux, which is the current operating system of the interactive display. With my M-Series, I also get three HDMI options. I get a Type-C option and I get a VGA option as well. If I'm connecting with HDMI, I'm going to receive audio and visual. I'm also going to receive an additional cable with my interactive display in the box. It's going to have a square end and a USB end. This cable is going to give me two-way touch, essentially turning my finger into the mouse. If I'm connecting with my Type-C, that's going to charge my device. It's also going to give me two-way touch without using the additional cable as well. If I'm using my VGA, I'm going to need an additional audio cable, and I'm also going to need my uh, square cable as well for my touch. Here we can also adjust our sound and our brightness, and we can also turn on eye care mode if we wish to do so. So another way of sharing your device onto the interactive display is uh, wirelessly with CleverShare. CleverShare is another free to download app from your Clever store. And we have our six digit code at the top side of the screen. That's gonna bring us into our CleverShare tab. Now if I go in my menu and if I go into my settings, here I can find uh, different permission modes. So we can turn on permission mode, uh, which is essentially gonna ask us, hey, look, Marco wants to join the screen and we can uh, decide if we want to accept or deny that. So I'm gonna put that on. We can also allow different devices to make quick connections. I usually keep that off uh, just in case there's teachers in different classes and they accidentally connect to your screen. We can also support Chromecast, AirPlay, and Mirecast. We can also change the name of our device on our Clever Share. And we can also change the code refresh rate from 10, 20, 30, and 60 minutes. And we can also just keep the same code if we wish to do so. We also have our floating window size, which is the six digit code at the very top of the screen. I have that on normal size, but we can change it to mini size, or we can close it all together. I usually keep it on normal size. So for CleverShare to work, you have to be on the same network as your device. So I'm going to connect to our CleverShare now. So I just typed in the six digit code into my device. Now I get two options. I get an option to screen share. So I'm able to share from my uh, device onto my interactive display. I also get an option to desktop sync. So I'm able to sync what's happening on the interactive display to my device. So I'm just going to start screen sharing now. So it's asking me for, for permission. I'm going to accept that. Now you're able to see my screen from my device. Now what I can do is I can start moving around the websites. So I'm able to move around the website and I'm able to use my device through my interactive display. Now, as I mentioned previously, I'm also able to desktop sync. So I'm able to bring my interactive display onto my device. 
So for example, let's say we have visually impaired students in class, they're able to connect to our display and see uh, the screen closer on their own device. We're also able to enable touch, so they're able to use uh, the interactive display from their device uh, if they wish to do so. So we have two arrows, we have one on the left and one on the right side of the screen. This is gonna give us quick access to certain apps. So at the top we have our whiteboard, so depending on which app is our default app on the whiteboard. So if I just tap on that, that's gonna bring me into my legacy whiteboard because I set that as the default app there. So in my legacy whiteboard, I get a three line menu at the bottom left side of the screen. This allows me to open up new files to save my whiteboard and it also allows me to import different files. So we can import our image, PDF and SVG files if we wish to do so. So I'm connected with my Clever Touch uh, to my Google Drive. Now we're able to connect to different cloud drives like our Google Drive, OneDrive and our Dropbox. So I'm just gonna bring in a PDF file into our presentation. So here I have my PDF file. Now I'm able to move that around the screen. I'm also able to resize that as well if I wish to do so. Now what we can do is we can get students to come up to the screen and start using our stylus pen and start annotating on the screen. Back on our three line menu, we're also able to export our uh, whiteboard as image, PDF, SVG, and etc. We can also change the background of our uh, whiteboard to different colors and different backgrounds as well. We also have our pencil case here. So we can set different uh, sizes and different types uh, and the color of our pen, depending on which side of the stylus we're using. So here we have our fine end. I'm gonna set that to orange. And we have our large end as well. And I'm gonna set that to a green color. So once I start using my fine end, it's gonna recognize that it's my fine end. Once I start using my large end, it's gonna recognize that it's my large end and on the screen and it's going to turn it into a color and size I specified in my pencil case. Next to that we also have our eraser icon so if I want to erase anything off the screen I'm going to hold my fist with my thumb up towards me and I'm able to delete anything off the screen or I can tap on the eraser I'm able to strike through different items and it's going to get rid of them or I'm able to circle different items as well that's going to delete them at two. Next to that we have our different shapes so we're able to bring in different 3D or 2D shapes and we're able to change the size for them and uh, put them on the screen. Our uh, legacy whiteboard comes with an infinity canvas so I'm able to move around the screen as far as I want uh, so there's no space limit with it. Now if I tap on that hand icon again I'm able to find different things that I've done uh, on the screen or different ob objects that I've brought on the screen so I'm not actually going to lose anything that I've annotated on the screen. We also have our art palette here, so very popular for art classes. We can change different colors of different types of pens. And we can get the kids to come up to the screen and start annotating on the screen. We can have up to 20 points of touch um, on our M series. So under my whiteboard, we also have our files. So again, these are our locally stored files or our cloud files uh, that we can find. So again, we can connect with our Google Drive, OneDrive and our Dropbox. As you can see, I'm connected with my Google Drive. Now I'm just gonna open up this PowerPoint presentation. So we're also able to play different presentations on our screen. We can swipe through different uh, pages. Now we also have our annotate and pen tool here on the side. So this gives me access to a few uh, actions on our screen. So we have our uh, scissor icon here, which is our snipping tool. So I'm able to snip different parts of the screen or I'm able to snip my full screen and I'm able to save that onto my files if I wish to do so. Under that, we have our sticky notes. So we're able to bring in different notes around the screen and move them around the screen as well. Under that, we have our spanner tool. So we're able to bring in a spotlight into different parts of the screen. We're also able to change the size of that spotlight and the clarity of the screen. Next to that, we have our magnifying glass with a plus sign. That's going to freeze my screen, as you can see on the top right side of the screen. And I'm able to zoom into different parts of the screen if I wish to do so. Now, if I want to unfreeze the screen, I can click the blue button on my controller, or I can just tap on the axe icon on my screen. 
Under that, we have our default whiteboard icon. So that's gonna take me into the default whiteboard that I've uh, put into my settings. We also have our annotate and pen tool. So that's gonna give me access to four different colors of pens and highlighters. And I'm able to start annotating with them on the screen. If we wanna delete anything off the screen, I'm gonna hold my fist with my thumb up towards me and I'm able to delete anything off the screen. Or I can just tap on my brush on the screen and it's gonna get rid of anything that I've annotated on the screen. We can also save what we've done onto our files. There's also an icon with three boxes together that's gonna to generate my QR code. With my QR code, I'm able to get my students to scan the QR code if they're on the same network as the interactive display and they're able to save the presentation onto their device. Under my annotating pen tool, I also get an option uh, with two windows together. It's gonna to allow me to see the different apps that are currently open on my interactive display. With that option, I'm also able to split screen, so I'm able to have two different apps on the screen at the same time. Under that, we have a little HDMI icon that's gonna bring in different inputs uh, that we have on the interactive display. Under that, we have our home button that's gonna take me back to the home page. Under that, we have our bin with the letter L that's gonna delete any locally stored files if we set that up on our settings and it's gonna allow me to leave meetings if I wish to do so. And under that, we have our back button that's gonna take me back out of different uh, pages, for example. Under my files, I also get my browser option. Under that, I also have a Clever Store option as well. So Clever Store comes at no extra cost and it comes with over 100 free games and apps that are free to download. In my Clever Store, I can find over 100 free apps and games that I can download onto my device. So I can uh, either browse for different uh, games by using my magnifying glass on the top right side of the screen, or I can just swipe through my Clever Store and find different apps that I'm able to download uh, on my interactive display. Under my Clever Store, we also have different active windows that I took you through previously. Under that, we have our lock, so we're able to lock our screen if we're at switching classrooms, for example. Under that, we also have our different apps that are currently downloaded on the interactive display. So I'm just gonna go into our settings really quickly. So here we have different settings for our M series. Uh, so we have our Wi-Fi, which is our wireless uh, internet connection. We also have an option for our Ethernet, which is our wired internet connection as well. We also have an options for our wireless hotspot, so we're able to share the hotspot from our interactive display to our students in class, for example. Next to that, we also have our Bluetooth, so we can connect to any Bluetooth devices if we wish to do so. Um, now further down, we also have our displays, so different display settings on our device. We also have our storage, so different storage options. Uh, we also have our apps, so different apps that are currently downloaded on the interactive display. Under that, we also have our startup and shutdown settings. These are very useful uh, if you know that you're, for example, starting at 9 a.m. and finishing up at, for example, 2 p.m. Uh, you're able to uh, add in a timer switch so your device starts at a certain time in the day and uh, it turns off at a certain time in the day. As you can see, I have mine off for 5.30 on weekdays. So when 5.30 strikes, when the screens are shut down, that's my uh, cue to go home. Now back out of that, we also have our different input settings. So in those settings, we can also rename our inputs. Uh, we can also set different passwords, but I usually would stay away from that in case uh, one of the teachers, for example, forgets the password. So I would stay away from the passwords. Then we also have our about device. This is where we can check for any system updates. So my one is up to date and there's about two updates a year. So once you receive your interactive display, I will check for any updates 